So Pastor Roger Jimenez out of Sacramento, California at Verity Baptist Church is being persecuted and he's being talked about in the media. He's being just ridiculed and put on blast by our mainstream media. And I just want to do a real quick video, you know. Uh, a lot of these pastors, we know, like, they're not preaching all the Bible. And the people are not stupid. Like, you know, people aren't dumb. They know that their pastor is not preaching on, you know, this homosexuality controversy, you know. And it's no controversy. It's the only controversy is amongst unbelievers and amongst people who just deny the word of God. Nowhere in the New Testament does Jesus say, you know, the death penalty is done away with. And he actually reiterates it. You know, he actually says that it's reiterated. And I just want to say, like, you know, these preachers, like, they're not preaching the full word of God. And, like, you got, like, whenever you got the mayor and you got senators and, and all these organizations and groups and liberal organizations and they just come together to to attack you this is a separation that's taking place right now and i just want to tell people who might not be in their word like they should be or you know not as spiritual as they would like to be not to fall for it you know don't fall for this this fake separation they want to divide it i'm telling you like if you watch the video you know the protesters that's outside of his church you know, I might put a, I'll put a link in the video, I mean, in the comment section, but they want to separate it. They want to make it like, okay, we're Christians. We don't believe homosexuality is worthy of the death penalty. Even though in Leviticus 2013, God says, you know, put them to death. So I don't understand how people could say that. Leviticus 2013, their blood shall be upon them. They shall surely be put to death. People like to say, well, Jesus came and he preached love. Jesus Christ is the same God that rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom. So, you know, the first gay massacre, quote unquote gay, I don't like that word to describe it. You know, I think gay means happy because that's a Bible word. God uses that word and uh, it says gay, the gay clothing. And gay just means happy. So I like to say, Lord God says, he says a sodomite. And, you know, people just, they get offended just by that. Just from you saying the word sodomite, people will be like, well, you're one of those people. I'm one of what people? The people that actually believe the word of God, that he's preserved his word in the English language with the KJV. So, yeah, I am one of those people. But my point is, don't fall for this whole fakeness, you know? they that, What was I saying? They say Jesus Christ taught love and you know, they make it seem like the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. It's so, it's fake. It's a farce. There have been changes made to the law. That's why we don't observe the Sabbath day. We don't observe new moons or feast days. We don't blow a trumpet. Um, just read Colossians 2 and read Hebrews 4. You know, Christ is our Sabbath. We don't observe new moons. And we don't observe the dietary laws, you know, under the old covenant, they couldn't eat certain things, you know, they couldn't eat certain animals. God says all every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. It was just a temporary, you know, restriction. It was a change made to the law. And you say, well, what changes happen? It's not the changes that we want to happen. It's the changes that he said happen. And he specifically says what we don't observe under the new covenant. Why do you think we don't sacrifice lambs and goats and bulls like they did on the altars because jesus christ is the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world the bible says that it was all a picture of him jesus said moses wrote of him so i just want to say that um we don't need to be fooled by this separation because i've seen the protesters i've seen the people in the comments i've seen people's posts i've seen the comments on the social media sites uh, I haven't spoken to people in real life about it, but a few, but you can tell where they're coming from. And, you know, I, one thing I noticed is that people get real bold online. They really say what they really feel. But my point is, don't be fooled by this separation, you know? They're going to try to say, we're Christians. We accept homosexuality. That's true Christianity. The love them. 
like Jesus would love them. And they really believe that this is how Jesus would react to sodomites. They don't believe, you know, Jesus would rebuke them. He don't, they don't believe Jesus is going to burn them with fire. They believe that God will accept them. And it just, you know, it's, it's, it's so fake. And it's clearly showing that you don't read the Bible. I mean, if you don't agree with the Bible, then you know this video isn't for you. But if you read the Bible and, and come away saying God is not against or staunchly against or hates sodomites, you just haven't read the Bible because it's clear. It's so clear. It's so clear that I don't even have to back it up. I don't even have to show you scripture. I mean, just start with Genesis and just keep going through and you'll notice over and over again God's wrath on even just fornication and adultery how much more something as wicked as sodomy you know and people just want to say oh no god love no he doesn't he doesn't love sodomites that's just the truth god doesn't love them that's why he burned them with fire and that's why he says in jude any nation that would go after strange flesh like sodom and gomorrah did defiling the flesh being a filthy dreamer that's the book of Jude. That's what the Bible says, right? You know, God does talk about love, but he also has a side of wrath. You, the Bible talks about who he hates, you know? Ecclesiastes 3. There are time, there's a time to hate, and there's a time to love. But don't fall for it. It's a sham. This is the time where we are at a specific place in history in this country. We've never been here where you have the opportunity to stand up for the word of God. If you love Jesus Christ and what he did for you, if you just believe that, you know, they throw his name around like it's unimportant, like he's not the king of kings, like he's not the Lord of lords, like he's not almighty God. You know, if this was just a regular person, I wouldn't even be making this video about him or his words. But this is God almighty. You know, when I say his name, I'm not just saying like it hasn't become cliche to me. I think Jesus's name is all powerful. And I think it's evident the way people just blaspheme his name or take it in vain in the movies and the cartoons and in every other way, you know? I think it's evident that people just, you know, that Jesus take the will, all of these little cliche things, it's, it's dishonoring to Christ. He's holy. You gotta recognize the Bible says under, the begin, uh, understanding is the knowledge of the holy. So if you don't have knowledge of what's holy or what it means to be holy or how God is holy, then you don't even have the beginning of wisdom. You have to understand that God is holy. He's lifted up. He's in, he's in heaven. We're on the earth. And if you don't believe that, then that's, like I said, that's just, I don't know. If you call yourself a Christian or you believe in Jesus and this is not something that you believe, you clearly are unlearned or you're a false convert. But I'm going to wrap it up, man. Just don't be deceived by this, this dividing line that they're doing, you know? And if, you're, if you go to church every Sunday and you just want to hear the sweetness and light and you just want to hear, you know, the ear-tickling sermons about my best life now and God's going to bless my business and the Lord is good and just hear all of, you know, the sweetness and the good stuff, but you don't want to hear about his wrath. If you don't want to hear about the vengeance that he takes on nations that will do what Sodom did and defile the land and support them and even have them in your congregation. And I mean, then go ahead, be apostate. You know, Jesus said there's coming a falling away and this might be it. We are in that falling away where a lot of people just say, yeah, Kenny, like me, like I'm Kenny. Kenny, you are, you're out to lunch. You're crazy. You're a fanatic. You're an extremist. You're a radical. I'm radical because I believe the Bible. Okay. You know, I take it. I'll take that title. I'll take it gladly. I mean, whatever. But you don't need to be a part of that apostate. And it just takes courage. And ask the Lord to give you boldness if you're a little afraid. But, you know, I just want to exhort people. I want to exhort people. Because this is something I feel is important. You know how people get up and push and promote you know, music and, and uh, the media and movies and, you know, they got the trailers. I think this is important. God's word and what he says is right. I feel like it's we should be esteeming it very highly and not just taking this attitude of. Of. um Just, you know, not apathetic, you know, just being apathetic to the things of God and what's true.